Hey folks, so uh, we just got back from a camping trip and I'm always on the lookout in fall and early spring uh, for new species to add to our stuff that I'm looking for. And on our trip, I finally tracked down some black locusts. I've been looking for years for black locust seed pods that are viable and every time I manage to find them, it's either the wrong time of year or I'm usually trying to look in fall. <clears throat> um, most of the time when I find pods that are not viable. Um, for whatever reason, uh, either there's no pods on it or they just shriveled up tiny little seeds in there that aren't nice, big, viable pods. So this time <clears throat> I found a bunch that were popping up in an area doing what black locusts like to do, which is produce rhizomatically too. They'll shoot out and then suckers will pop up. So you can propagate black locusts from root cuttings because of this. So I pulled up a few little ones to pull up their long roots. Um, we may throw some chunks with these stems on there and see if these stems sprout back. I pulled all the leaves off. Um, it is middle of September here, so everything does still have leaves. I pulled all the leaves off because since we're drastically reducing the amount of root structure that'll be on each of these, because we're going to cut and do a lot of root cuttings off of them, we'll just leave a little piece on there. We don't want to overtax the top with the amount of leaf structure that's already there that's transpiring out water that it can't support from such a small root system. So by pulling off the leaves, we're forcing the plant to kind of start over. Um, we'll put it up in a warm area in the house um, that's got some plastic around it and in a window. Uh, so fingers crossed, we'll see if some of these tops make it. If they don't, it's not a big deal because the goal should be for the roots to come back new. So I'm gonna show you how we're doing that. So what we have here is just your basic bulb crate with some weed barrier and then some potting mix thrown in there. Uh, Really any potting mix will do. You just want to soil this medium. Uh, this is a blend of vermicompost from our farm, uh, some peat moss and some miracle Grow potting mix because it's just things that I had on hand that I usually just blend up. Sometimes we'll use compost from our garden uh, pile, but honestly, we get a lot of weed seeds that way. This gives me no weed seeds. So this allows us to have um, what's called a root prune pot essentially. So because air can get into the sides of these, as the roots hit the sides, they'll die when they hit the air instead of circling. So in your normal black pots, they'll circle around and kind of girdle the plant. This causes them to have a more fibrous root system because as they hit the end and die, they branch out more instead of just circling. So this gives you a much more vibrant thing. We use this for a lot of different types of cuttings that we do. And occasionally I'll do it if it's trees from my farm and I'm not trying to sell them. Um, I'll often do either nut species, like anything that I have, no, I'm gonna have a ton of. So a lot of oaks I'll do this way. Uh, we'll do a lot of uh, honey locusts, persimmons for our farm. If I'm going to sell it, I like to use containers, which uh, we'll look at some in another video and I'll show you what those look like because those are much easier to sell because you just have a pot that you can give to somebody and we can start them as seedlings and then sell them that spring. And then we'll either, any that are left over, just pop them out and plant them on our farm or transplant them to a bigger pot. But if it's just from my farm, this is a great easy way to do it in bulk quantities that I don't have to worry about them drying out, somebody not planting them at the right time or having to overwinter them. So let's go ahead and cut these up. Uh, so one other thing here, you don't need oxen, supposedly, to do this, uh, that they'll root pretty good on their own, but, and this is just what that looks like, just a giant water leaves. I threw some damp napkins because I had them in the glove box in here to help keep the roots from drying out because uh, I got them the first night on a two-night camp trip. Uh, we were car camping, so that makes life a little easier. Here's one that already just went ahead, and it's got a top. We pulled the leaves off. We're going to go ahead and we'll throw it in, but we're going to take some uh, root, take root, rooting hormone, just garden safe stuff from, this was either Lowe's or Amazon, I don't even remember which. We're going to go ahead and dip it in. And you don't need to do this. I'm doing this because I don't see black locusts around me very often, so, and I've been looking for a couple years to find some. So I want to make sure to get as many of these to take as possible. So I'm going to take every precaution possible. And when you're using rooting hormone to get cuttings to take, it's a good idea to take something nice and large, make a dimple. Make sure you guys are actually being able to see this. Yeah, make a dimple, 
because if we just stab that rooted cutting in there, a lot of that oxen will wipe off on the sides of us stabbing it into the potting soil and won't not as much be on there, making a big hole. When we put it in, we know that all that oxen stays in there and then we can compress the soil back in around it, okay? So with these cuttings, uh, here's another one that was just a random section of root. So we'll go ahead and get it in and out of the way. And we're just going to, this one, we're going to root all three of the sides and put it where that little thingy is poking up. And I think that's enough root mass to go ahead and just leave that, that on there. This one could be a mistake, but this, this is all an experiment for me. This is way late in the year. This is September. I wouldn't normally be trying to do this this late in the year. So follow along and see if this horribly fails and all of them just die or if we succeed. Uh, so what you'd normally do is cut them in about two to two to four inch cuttings for these. Oh, here's a fun thing. So on this route, you can see this. So honey locusts are nitrogen fixed. Hey, sorry, I got to interrupt myself here. One, this is not a honey locust. This is a black locust, two completely different species. But two, honey locusts don't produce nodules like this to store bradyrhizobium in. They think that they do indeed sequester uh, convert nitrogen from atmospheric sources using bradyrhizobium, but no one is completely certain yet. They think they may do it in the actual root mass inside the root, which is drastically different from most legumes that form these nodules like this. So just a cool little fact. Now back over to black locust. Very legume. So this is bradyrhizobium. Yeah, bradyrhizobium. Uh, they grow in root nodules on legumes. And so you can see it on here. So this will help fix nitrogen out in our pastures from the atmosphere. So when the plant dies or the roots are cut back, especially when we coppice and it kills off sections of roots to re-sprout, that'll all be released back into the soil. So super, super neat. One of the big reasons I want these is for their coppice potential. So this little guy, he's got a long section of root and another little stem. We'll go ahead and put him in that way. But we're going to trim off some of this root that doesn't really look alive. Either because I damaged it or something else. But we're gonna go ahead and oxen both ends and put it in. And we can really plant these pretty dense because of the way those fibrous roots are gonna develop. So I'm not concerned about them being too close together. Honestly, we could pack, I've seen people do these where they're just like packed in real tight. So, with this size container, we've got a pretty big one. I'm not, we've got plenty of room. Snip, 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 snip. That should hopefully be more than enough. This is a pretty big stem for this to have to try to support, but we'll cross our fingers with that rooting hormone and that uh, moist, humid atmosphere that it'll have up in the grow area. And we'll, we'll do some updates on these pretty frequently so you can see whether or not they're leafing out and taken off or whether or not they all just kind of died. And I'm probably going to try to do most of the tops over here on the all on the same end. The biggest thing is, so, so you can see we got this tear on there. Uh, we want to close that up. So this will help it form that callus faster and produce roots from that callus. And these are so awkward, I'm not even going to use that, uh, that drill bit. We're just going to move it out with our hands and then put it in. One way to tell, I don't have, you can see they've got some leaves, but that's really hard to tell on that one. Uh, one way to tell your black locust apart from your honey locust is that I'm going to go ahead and leave all that section root on there. Uh, so black locusts have, find the camera there, two guard thorns at each bud juncture, whereas your honey locust has thorn on thorn. So just big giant six inch thorns. So these are much smaller. And as the tree gets larger, uh, these will lose their thorns. 
because they're only happening at bud junctions, there's not bud junctures unless there's epicormic branching, so branching along the stem uh, on the tree. Whereas your honey locust produces at those advantageous epicormic branching, even if the actual branching doesn't happen. So you'll get thorns all along that trunk. So these make much better fence posts. They're very rot resistant and they're very hard. So they're very, very good for uh, firewood fence posts. I know I just said that, but it really bears repeating because they're so rot resistant. Uh, so many, so many good uses on a farm for coppiced black locust, which is native to the Appalachia region. So native to North America, not crazy, crazy far from where we're at down here in Southern Missouri. It is still a little ways. They're considered native to here, but they're really, this isn't part of their full out range. So now we're gonna go into here and we're gonna cut about two to four inch long sections of root. And I'm just gonna lay them all here in front of us. I saw a few things that mentioned Trying to put them in so that they are up and down, and then some recommended doing them horizontally. I don't really know at this point which is going to be the best for these, so we may do. Plus, it would be really hard for me to tell which end. It said the vertical was whichever end was heading towards the tree, but these were kind of all over the place. So it'll be really, really hard to tell which end was going towards the tree, especially since they've been wound up in a bag. And some of these that do already have some little extra links of roots, we're gonna go ahead and leave those. And y'all don't need to see me cut up the rest of this bundle. We're gonna go and stop and I'll come back to you. I'm gonna do that same thing. We're just gonna dip these in the, this one we can tell which way was down because it's bigger and smaller. This is all I'm gonna do for all of these. Dip in an oxen. Make our little hole, work it in. And actually, I did not need to put oxen on that end. Sorry, I will only put oxen on one end on all the others. <laughs> so it will be more like, looks like those roots are angling that direction. We will put oxen on one end, make the hole, put it in the hole and tap it. So we're gonna do that for probably about half of them, do them vertical like this. And then the other half, and I'll start on this other side to show you that. I will oxen both ends for that method so we can see which works better. So as we're following up, we'll kind of be able to keep track of that. Those ones, we're gonna lay horizontally. And I'm just gonna kind of wind that root down in there. As it hits the side, it'll die off. So we'll lay a bunch in horizontally like that, and we'll lay a bunch like this, which is the other method I've seen. Um, being a little bit out, and I may take a few of these as we get towards the middle and do them with most of that completely under the soil. The ones that I saw, they had the roots because that's oftentimes what triggers them in the uh, wild is when the root is exposed to air, then they'll throw out a bud. Or if it gets damaged and cut off, which is what this would trigger or showcase. So, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and stop you guys and I'm gonna fill this tray. So one of the easiest ways to get your potting mix wet, because a lot of potting mix starts out hydrophobic or repellent of water instead of, especially if it has high amounts of peat moss, which this does, um, instead of being hydrophilic or loving. So you've got to get it wet gently. It's, if you ever notice, like you try to water a plant that is fully dried out and the water just beads up on the surface and rolls off, well, that's why. One way to combat that is to introduce small droplets of water at a time versus one large pool that has uh, high, high amounts of surface tension. So spraying it down with a water bottle first before pouring water into it will allow that surface to have less tension and break up into the mix a little bit easier. So we'll do this. I'm not gonna fully water it down here because I'm gonna take it up there to that room first. Uh, but this shows you guys what we're doing. <clears throat> this makes it so I don't track a bunch of dust through my house since I have to go upstairs. So why might you want to grow black locust on your farm? 
One reason being that they're a nitrogen fixer, so very high protein if you're gonna do tree hay. They're pretty comparable, honestly, to alfalfa, which seems like, you know what, everything is comparable to alfalfa if it's worth anything. Seems to be what everybody, <laughs> I don't know how many times I read, is comparable to alfalfa, uh, but it is in protein content. Um, so if you're doing either just as uh, chop and drop to feed to livestock throughout the summer during a drought, or whether you're drying it down for tree hay, it is great for that. It also coppices insanely readily. I mean, all of these were on a creek bank that obviously the tops had been broken off, or there were sections of roots that had been exposed and sprouted up. So these are one of the most common species for coppice, especially in Europe. They're native to here, but they've been taken over to Europe because they're so good at coppice regrowth. Um, they're great for firewood. They're a very hard wood. Very close up there to Osage Orange and Oak. I mean, Osage Orange is obviously much harder than Oak, but they're, it is up there in the ranking for, for that. Um, so is Honey Locust, to be honest. But Honey Locust has those giant thorn on thorns, you know, and these just have the little thorns. And as these get bigger, they lose those thorns uh, along the trunk. The branches still have them, but along the trunk, they lose those. These also produce delicious giant white flowers uh, that tastes a lot like green beans. Um, I love them. So the, I've got a friend who's got one. And so every year I'll go up and get some of his. Um, we'll mix them in with salads and anything like that. Uh, but so great for firewood. They're super rot resistant. They're firewood because of how hard they are and how fast they grow from coppice regrowth. The lumber is gorgeous. It is a like, it looks a lot like Osage orange or mulberry, that deep orangish yellowy color inside. Um, so great if you're going to do any small farm craft stuff or you're going to mill your own lumber, beautiful for that. And it grows back so fast that you can do some of that smaller project stuff. Great for fence posts because of how hard they are. Um, honestly, there's about a thousand reasons to plant these, this tree and why it is one of the most common trees to be planted in a permaculture system in North America and even around the world. Uh, but I have really struggled to get my hands on it. So now that I've got some and got these potted up, stay tuned and we'll see whether or not this happens. Like I said, this is really late in the year. This should have been done this, you know, in the spring, but I brought these from like two and a half hours away. I will not be going back out there. And uh, everybody I know that has these, they're yard trees and they don't want me digging up the section of their yard to rip up some roots. So, this on a creek bank didn't matter. A lot of the roots were already exposed. Um, yeah, I'll just keep you guys updated in little bits and snippets and other videos of, hey, here's how these are doing. And then come this spring, if they root out nice and big and pretty, we'll plant these out in the field. So, thank you guys. Y'all have a good one. And remember that if you like this content, to hit that subscribe button so that you get those notifications and you see when videos drop. Uh, hit that like button if you like the video. So then I know to keep making more stuff about trees because I love trees and I love the impact that it can have on our farms. If you farm, you need trees. Um, so I will actually, honestly, whether or not you like this video, I hope you do like this video and you appreciate it and it was worthwhile to you. But because of how important I think trees are to your, our farms uh, here in, I was going to say the Midwest, but honestly the whole world, um, I will be making more tree videos and in how to incorporate that into silver pasture in your farms. So whether or not you like that, I'll be making more, uh, so I guess if you don't, just ignore them and watch for puppy and pig videos. But uh, yeah, and if you got questions about what other trees you'd like to see things on, I know willows, we're gonna be doing a big section on our coppice and pollard systems on the farm, and that'll touch on a lot of the willow stuff that we do, and then I'll do one just specifically on, here's how I do willow, only willow, uh, because it is a little bit different than all of our other species. Every species we do is very species specific. Uh, in the care that they take. So willows have a lot of different things from what your normal, from what the other species do, because we do multiple species. So, uh, yeah. All right. Sorry, I've rambled on long enough. You guys have a good one.